Welcome back to today's Creative Cave. Today, I will be presenting my last and final vlog for the semester. Now, I haven't had my eight cups of coffee yet, so I may be a bit platitudinous. It's a new word I learned 20 minutes ago. I thought the word boring was, well, boring. There's no big spectacle planned for this one. Usually, I like to go out with a bang. Today, eh, more of a light breeze. Today's movie is Do the Right Thing, which was written and directed by Spike Lee, who also had a lead role in this movie as the character Mookie. The rest of this cast include Danny Aiello as Sal, the pizza shop owner, Bill Nunn as Radio Rahim, an imposing young man who walks around blaring public enemy on his boombox. John Turturro as Sal's racist older son, Pino. John Carlo Esposito as Buggin' Out. Ruby D as mother sister who watches the world from her window. And last but not least, a man that needs no introduction, Samuel L. Jackson as Mr. Senor Love Daddy. And now it's time for some interesting facts. So this racial drama slash comedy was pressured not to be released or at least pushed back until after the summer for fear of racial unrest, eh, riots and whatnot. Universal was 100% behind the film and was not afraid. However, white film critics were fear mongering about the violence this film might bring. They failed to take into account that art often imitates life and that the film was a representation of society, the political and racial climate of the United States, especially in New York City, which was a hotbed for racial hate crimes. The opening kicks off with a saxophone rendition of James Weldon Johnson's Lift Every Voice and Sing, originally a poem from 1900, which eventually came to be adopted as the Black National Anthem. The clip of the song is brief, and it fades away as the screen goes black. This is a small nod to film overtures of old. Now, Lee's opening title is a classic sequence and an important moment in the film. It shows Rosie Perez dancing, embodying the soul of Do the Right Thing, which is representing the embattled intersection of history, music, cinema, and racial tension. The simmering heat of it all. The dance scene was so grueling for Miss Perez that after it was all said and done, she ended up on crutches. In her dance scenes, she never smiles. That's because her on-screen anger was real. The take took place on a concrete soundstage where Lee had her do numerous takes in order to bring more passion and anger to her dancing. Her back went out, she injured her knees, and developed tennis elbow from throwing all those punches. Way more punches than we see in the movie. The scene where Mookie throws a trash can through a window was not as easy as it looked. It took multiple tries and finally they had to score the glass so that it would break. The film was partly inspired by one of Alfred Hitchcock Presents episodes where a man was doing a study that after a certain temperature their murder rate goes up. Well, I for one hate, hate being hot. Damn you Florida! The film almost had a different ending. At the last minute, Paramount got cold feet and asked Lee to tone down the conflict-heavy ending. They wanted Mookie and Sal to hug it out and make up while ending with the both of them singing, We Are The World. Lee told them, no way, and the next day, he took his movie to Universal and the rest is history. 
So the story goes, on the hottest day in the year, Sal opens up his pizza shop that's been there for over 25 years. During this time, the neighborhood has changed with more blacks moving in. His son, who doesn't like the neighborhood color, hates it and wants to relocate the joint to their own Italian neighborhood. Sal refuses because he has built this place from the foundation up, so it means a lot to him. Well, one of the kids comes in, bugging out, and he starts to raise a fuss as to why all the famous pictures on the wall were of white people. They weren't a black community, so he felt that there should be some important black people on the wall as well. Sal refuses, and now this wall becomes a symbol of racism to bugging out. So he starts a fuss and involves the local community, which causes tensions to rise, and a small riot breaks out, which involves the police, and doesn't end well for anyone. A young black man is killed by a police officer with a chokehold. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? My first perception of this movie made me think it was a goofy spoof of a hot summer day, so I never bothered to watch it when I was younger. After having learned a little bit about it in my sound and image and motion class, I was intrigued to watch it. And I'm glad I did. This six and a half million dollar hit really touched on the racial problems in America that are still ongoing today. I did end up liking this movie, and after the little research I dug up, I learned some things about New York and the racism that the communities face that I never knew existed outside of TV. I have an appreciation of Spike Lee's work as an artist speaking out against or even bringing awareness to this significant issue through his film. This concludes my vlog. Thank you for suffering through these past presentations with me. I hope you have enjoyed them as much as I did making them for you. I bid you adieu.